Hi, I want to, uh, you know, thank you guys for actually watching. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, court proceedings has got to be the most dull thing in the world. And that's why nobody cares about, you know, people that are deprived of justice. You know, they care more about Britney Spears and uh, NHL hockey or, or uh, CFL hockey or NFL football before they care about the guy who's going to be deprived of justice because it's not entertaining. And, uh, but, you know, the thing is, like, there's a lot of people that are actually being deprived of justice. You know, there's so many people that judges are victimizing, depriving of justice by stepping over the boundaries of law and the rules of court of Alberta. You know, there's people that actually go to jail. And the thing is, like, so I really appreciate you listening to me. And, uh, you know, by listening to me and becoming aware of it, you know, we can actually help people that, uh, that get deprived of justice. So, you know, since you're back here listening to me, and I just want to tell you, I sincerely thank you for being here. But before we get on to Exhibit P and Q, I just want to show you this letter here from uh, Allison Redford. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just enlarge it in so you can see on the screen. And I also have it posted up at my blog. Letter response from Allison Redford just up on uh, that side of the uh, YouTube uh, info box posted there in this video because uh, that is actually evidence that uh, Allison Redford the Justice Minister of Alberta is uh, is ploying to cover up uh, judicial corruption and also judicial fraud of the three justice appeal panel because they came up with so many things in their judgment that they didn't get from the appeal books and the main thing was they said, you know, I explained to them evidence was adduced that cannot be adduced. And uh, I said I was ambushed with evidence. I never said anything was adduced. They said something was adduced, but pursuant to Alberta Rule of Court 158.5, subsection 1E, the evidence could not be adduced. And they came up with so many other things that uh, in their judgment, you know, like... I want Allison Redford to do a, uh, a judicial inquiry. It's like, I'm going to come up with a list of questions and we'll, you know, get into that more later in the week. I'm going to actually have another video on that. And, uh, you know, the ju I want those Court of Appeals judges to show me, well, where did you come up with this in the judgment? Where did you come up with this? And how did you come up with this? And they've got to show us where in the appeal books where a lot of things are. Because if they're in grade three and the grade three teacher gave them a test on my appeal books, the grade, grade three teacher would flunk them. She would send them to the principal's office for a harsh strapping. And uh, well, they don't have straps these days, but they did back in my days. And uh, I've never had it, but uh, I know a bunch of other kids that have. And anyways, uh, let's get on to uh, the cross-examination of exhibit uh, uh, P and Q. And then after we'll get on to the cross-examination after that in the next video of Exhibit R. And uh, so anyways, this is a very good video. If you uh, want to know what the about the boundaries of law and the rules of court. Because you don't want to be ambushed in court. So it is quite highly educational. It's even very educational for a lot of lawyers. Because I'll tell you something. I know the, the rules of court uh, of Alberta all... 478 pages of it, a lot better than any judge or any lawyer, I can tell you that for a fact. And uh, when it comes to the acts of the law, when it comes to the Matrimonial Property Act and the, and the Canada Evidence Act, I know those laws pretty good inside out. And there's a lot of lawyers that you know, know that pretty good too as well. But you know, I, I know the Canada Evidence Act a lot better than Justice Horner. And, of course, I had to actually learn the hard way. But anyway, Justice Horner had no right depriving me of the Canada Evans Act because evidence should have not been served, especially Exhibit M, M to R. And not within trial parameters and pursuant to Alberta or uh, the Canada Evans Act, Sections uh, 28, you can't, they could have not been adduced, they could have not been adduced into trial. You, they, Miss Sales could have only served him seven days before trial or informed me she was going to use them 
and she and she did not. I didn't even know those exhibits would be there. Anyways, let's go on, get on with exhibit P and Q. And uh, I hope you uh, find this to be educational. Thank you. An email uh, dated November 17th is exhibit P. Again, in reference to this email, you stated, I am offering to accept 9000 to give you my half of our medicine hat home and mortgage. And then further on in the email, you state, just to make matters more simple, I will accept 9000 Then you'll become 100% owner of the medicine hat home. Is this correct that you made this statement? I don't recall these emails at all. If I was not so confused and thrown off kilter by Justice Hunter being the cause that allowed Rhonda Sales to ambush me with fresh new exhibits, if Justice Hunter had fulfilled her duties as a judge to be well versed with trial parameters, or if she had not neglected trial parameters that Justice Rowland set out at pretrial, if Justice Hunter had protected my rights as a citizen to the access of law, an act respecting witnesses and evidence pursuant to sections 28.1 and 28.2 of the Canada Evidence Act, and Alberta Rule of Court 158.5 subsection 1e, that I would have not had my rights of knowing what I was being cross-examined on, stepped on, that I would have had not been so confused when having to answer to Rhonda Sales' Exhibit P. Justice Karen Horner neglected her duties as a judge or her non-equal female biased values prevented me to answer to Rhonda Sales' Exhibit P for the record like this. Yes, Ms. Acton, your Exhibit P is an email I sent you which was a more than reasonable proposal I made you during a time of crisis. You abandoned your marriage vows to me. You made to me at St. Patrick's Church that you made to me in Medicine Hat on September 10, 1994. You abandoned me because of multiple sclerosis deteriorating me, which later led to an MS attack that made me become disabled. I made you a generous, reasonable offer in a time of crisis when MS was riddling me, causing me to become financially unstable. I made you an offer out of destitute. An offer that would have yielded a huge whopping lopsided split of matrimonial in your favor, Miss Actum. This was an offer that you did not accept. 